Uh, when was the first time that you actually recall hearing heavier music, like rock music or metal music? Oh yeah, my uh, my elder brother Timo, who is seven years older, he was listening at home, actually hard rock, even some metal, and and uh, yeah, I was very very little. I was hearing him. He was also playing drums at home, so. Not really metal, but but he was playing drums, so he was always around the music in my childhood already. So what was in metal music that sort of caught your attention? It really didn't get my attention when, okay. I, was a, when I was a kid, actually. It didn't get my attention that much, but um, but classical music got my attention. and. Seriously, I nobody in my family was really familiar with classical music, but I happened to hear classical music and somehow it drew me and caught my attention and and I felt like uh, I want to know more about this. I want to learn what is it. And that's that was and is my background. All of it is in classical music. Metal and the love for metal music came later on uh, through Nightwish and through the experience I got to be part of a metal band, be part of, you know, and start working in this scene. And it was absolutely amazing how much beautiful music I got to know and learn. So was like Nightwish your first proper metal band that you joined in or did you have yeah. some kind of like band project before? Yeah, absolutely. Nightwish was the first one. If you talk about metal, yes. We had in a high school um, bands and projects, but not really like nothing, nothing serious. I was studying music, I was studying classical music, I was studying lyrical singing, I was studying, you know. Um, but uh, metal, yeah, Nightwish was the first one. Mm. So when you joined like Nightwish, were you first like making covers or did you like immediately tr like try to make your own music? What kind of like early memories do you have with the band? It was the first demo, seriously. Um, the first demo was really, really, really acoustic. Um, it was just uh, acoustic guitar, keyboards and my voice. And it was not metal. It was uh, <laughs> something else. It was really... Hmm, how how would I describe that? It was really beautiful and airy and, you know, I I thought, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm gonna, I really like the songs and I went to studio and I sang the songs and the guys knew me because we were from the same village. So they, the guys knew that I had a voice, I had always been singing around, um, playing in, uh, or singing in local events. So they knew that I can sing, but they did not know that I had gone into music university and my voice had changed into operatic. So as, um, as I have started uh, lyrical singing. So it was a surprise in the studio that they heard me singing with the lyrical <laughs> vocals and they were like, what the heck is this? <laughs> okay. So the, the songs at the moment, at that time on the demo, they were too too light, airy for my big, big Voice. vocals. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So did it take like long time to figure out like the right technique to do those like high pitch, more operatic vocals or did that came like naturally for you? It was really tough. The, um, you know, I was in the beginning of my classical singing um, when I joined Nightwish. It was like I had recently started the University Sibelius Academy here in Finland. And so I was in the beginning, <laughs> I would say in both ends, you know, singing metal and singing lyrical. So I had to find the middle way somewhere where to put my voice how to project my voice into these metal songs that we were doing we did our second demo it was our first album angel for falls first and and uh, it was really difficult for me to project the voice so that i didn't sound like a like an opera singer i did not want to sound like an opera singer but I used my lyrical technique on that record and from from that on in all the records. But 
the beginning was tough. It was really tough. Um, I was not aware of my instrument, my body, how it needs to function. My technique was not good enough. So were you also like losing your voice? No, never like that. Okay. I never, never, never was losing my voice. That was my focus always. 100% my vo focus was never to harm my voice. It was tough because when we started making the first concert tours and, um, you know, uh, the equipment was not really as it is nowadays, you know, the in-ears and uh, amazing studio kind of uh, sound. Um, I could not hear my voice at all when the band was playing and blasting and, you know, through the vetch I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna destroy my voice completely, but I didn't. Uh, I was always very focused in technique. So um, was that the, like the first proper European tour that you were like now explaining also? That, that was that kind of experience for you? Yeah, it was. Uh, we did some shows with Angels Falls, Angel Falls first, and then your, with the second album, Ocean, Oceanborn, we went to Europe already. Uh, supported rage and that was tough but hey it was fun also at the same time did you already like learn a lot about yourself while you were on the road for the first time yeah of course but it, all new it was all new uh, you know everything was new um the traveling aspect was not new to me i had been in europe before um but and travel around in in several countries, but the all, all the rest, you know, sleeping in a touring bus that I <clears throat> didn't get any sleep whatsoever, and uh, you know, guys were partying all the time, 24/7, and I was the only girl around. There were nobody, there were no other women. I mean, no. <laughs> okay. Testosterone was on, and but they, I, I had fun. I, I mean. I suffered, yeah, I did, because I needed to focus on my voice and to be able to deliver every day. And, and that, was, that was really tough, but I managed. And because the music was beautiful and I, I wanted to get everything out of it, you know, from the experience. Did you already have, like, back then some kind of, like, warm-up routine? And has that somehow changed or has it remained the same for you throughout the years? The warm-up... Absolutely, it's, it has always been there. It's a vital process for me. I can't um, go and sing if my body is cold, if my voice is cold in a way that I need to feel I'm ready for it. Um, it I, you know, I have been very, very lucky to have seriously good vocal coaches throughout the years. I'm still taking singing lessons time to time. My vocal coach is in Buenos Aires. I went through the Sibelius Academy experience. After Sibelius Academy, I went to Germany University in Karlsruhe. And I always had different kind of vocal coaches, but they were all more or less talking about the same things. But I picked up my um, way of doing things from them. You know, what are good for me? And I believe as they are as many singers as they are mushrooms in this world. I mean, seriously, we all we need to find our way. What is good for me? It not, it's not necessarily good for somebody else. So I had to find it. And yes, the warm ups are really important. I do breathing exercises. I do some stretches. I do even some push ups and I try to, you know, I yeah, it's a it's a physical but also mental process to prepare yourself for the show so are there like some specific foods or drinks that you wouldn't rather have for the show that you have for example felt that they affect your vocal cords somehow i really enjoy drinking lemon with ginger that is something that i'm doing with a little warm water every day like every day i'm doing that i feel that it's really good for me Klaus Meine from Scorpions gave me a really good tip a long time ago that there is a tea, it's like a throat coat that you can only get that from America, unfortunately, but, but I've been ordering that tea ever since that 
when he told me that it's been really good for my voice it's like oh but it also has some like a licorice um it has a ginger uh, maybe cardamom something like it's really soothing the vocal cords and it makes me feel good i even drink that during the show but water is the best if you think about a water is the water is the best anyway but sometimes if you need some like a mm, you feel like uh, the ginger is the miracle <laughs> so you mentioned now like having tips from klaus Meine. but yeah. what kind of like vocalist did you admire like when it comes to the metal world did you had some kind of like people that you admired or was it more like from the classical side that you looked up to well yeah because you know my childhood went into or my whole youth went into classical music uh, studying and all that so and because the metal world was new to me so i didn't get to really uh, listen metal before i joined nightwish and i got to know about dio or bruce dickinson and all these incredible voices yeah i mean but women not really but male vocalists they were there that i was like wow how on earth these guys can sing like that <laughs> you know it was really nice but maybe my blessing in overall has been that i have this I have always used my lyrical technique in singing rock metal and I'm still doing it and that's kept me going and and also the fact that I have not needed to show more than necessary it's been always enough the voice I have so obviously you have released a lot of albums with Nightwish and also as a solo artist but are there like some specific albums that you could sort of pinpoint from your career that you have taken a step forward as a vocalist that you have learned something new about yourself oh absolutely i think from nightwish career i can say the last album once there is in a way it's sad that it's uh, it's my last album with the band but the thing is that there i felt finally super comfortable in using my voice making differences uh, coloring the songs being powerful enough singing with the operatic parts yes and then going softer vocals where they were needed softer vocals it is like on that album i felt everything was in harmony the band the music my voice everything and so it's definitely my favorite album <laughs> from the band and it made me realize that hey now i can project and now i'm comfortable now i'm okay i don't need to think about too much anymore i can just have fun yeah so what about solo career are there like some specific albums from your solo career that you felt that you have sort of taken a step i have to tell you that my recording uh techniques you know i'm recording nowadays alone my vocals but I used to record without any, you know, without only with the loudspeaker in front, like singing live, in a live room, not in a studio environment, like in a like where where we are now at the moment, in a living room environment, and because of the the high and more the songs that needed more lyrical vocals, I always have had trouble in using headphones, for example, but. Um, nowadays i don't necessarily need that any longer and the difference was between shadows shelf and in the raw album my latest album that i just sat down in the studio alone and i said shit i need to record my vocals on my own i will do it i can do it <laughs> and I, the confidence in me somehow had grown along the way and i said okay um, I need to be able to do this and still it is tough when it comes to the operatic vocals to do it with the headphones it is tough but um, there is a difference i i can feel that i am quite okay with that already so are there like some specific tracks from nightwish or either from the solo album that you feel that are like extremely difficult to perform live <laughs> <laughs> there are many. <laughs> <laughs> there are many. But 
but you know, I haven't been singing the Nightwish songs. So uh, I have, I have been singing. Maybe I take a one song in a show or none uh, currently anymore in my own shows. But I um, I got to record one Nightwish song for the crew of Nightwish. Yeah, Crewwish some, album. Yeah, Crewwish album, some time ago, and uh, it was such a fun moment for me because I felt like, hey. This is so easy. And I remember recording when I was recording the song. It was tough and it was high and it was like, a, mm, I needed to work. Uh, uh, but now it was like, hey, this is fun. So it was a good good moment for me to realize that, hey, I've done something good and I've, I've developed and, um, you know, made progress. It's a good thing. But there are songs like, okay, first comes in mind a um, cover song that I covered, I dared to cover from Muse, Supremacy, from my second to last album, The Shadow Self. Oy, that song is a bitch every time I sing it, <laughs> but I love the song and I and I really, really love the song, but it's it, the range is huge. <laughs> but also my own songs, I tend to write damn difficult melodies for my voice. In a way, I enjoy the fact that not too many singers can sing my songs <laughs> because of it. I mean, seriously, the range is um, talking about innocence, for example. Um, victim of ritual is another one. Always a focus on, but already I'm having fun. So that's a, that's a good thing. So what were your parents' reactions when they heard that you joined a metal band? Do you remember? I do remember my parents, they've always been okay with my music choices and my life choice, choices in general. I mean, um, my mother, I, oof, my, my mother was the coolest person on this earth. I mean, she's unfortunately not any longer here, but yeah, she was my buddy. I mean, we went to, <laughs> we, went to we went to buy the first performing clothes from in sex shop in Joensu. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> we we went to look for some um, PVC pants and something like that with my mom. So yeah, she was completely cool with it. My father as well, and uh, they had fun and they came to see the shows with Nightwish and you know, <laughs> really cool. It's all okay. They always trusted my instincts. Like okay, you know what you want, you know what you want, and you do what you want which I really appreciate. And I really try to do that myself at the moment for my child. Last question. Any advice that you would like to give to a young metal or rock vocalist who is just about to start the journey? Anything that comes into your mind? I have always said, always said that it would be good to sing for some professional, you know, in one point. Because your own ears might not be enough. Even, I don't talk about lyrical singing, not necessarily, but there are really great vocal coaches around uh, that could give you tips. And because it is a tough road out there, you might think that you are capable. Yeah, but the road is hard. And if you're young, yeah, again, you have the strength in your body, but the vocal cords are like <laughs> like this. And you can make such damage so easily. So I always say, look for somebody. Find that person that could be there for you when you need him or her. Um, yeah, it is important. Thanks a lot. No, thank you.